So guys, I've been back two days now. I lasted 28 days out uh, in the field and decided it was enough for me. I'm still kind of processing a little bit that I left on the 28th. I really had the 30th in mind as my, my get out of jail card just for the simple fact that uh, I hadn't caught any fish in five days um, and I'm getting really skinny and I was just lonely. I felt like the weather might be changing and it was really going to impact me staying inside uh, the shelter which I was not enjoying. So here I am. I'm in my warm gear. Uh, I'm, I've had a few meals of uh, broth. They start you out very slow with a refeeding program. I end up losing about 19 pounds this time around. Pretty empty inside, so you get broth, a cracker, a little bit of fruit. You, you get to start out very slow, but it's all good. Um, I'm really enjoying my downtime here and processing the whole experience. And um, it's, just, it's overall been really great. Um, I'm not second guessing leaving and I had a great experience so I'll be talking more about it as uh, time goes on but for now warm wood stove, soft bed, a little bit of food and I'll soon be seeing all my loved ones so it's all good. I'm really really happy right now I'm satisfied, no regrets and uh, see what's next Right, guys, I just left my gear. I'm on my way to the dining hall and communication center gear. This is our resident pet right here. It's little Chippy. Oh, he left. Where'd you go? Oh, he'll be back. This is. Ooh, got to bend down really good. This is Chow Hall right here. We had a nice fire going. This is where we eat. And we get to make our one phone call home to family. We got some broth and and uh, fruit, crackers. It's all a really, really basic limited diet. It's on a refeeding plan right now, um, where when you come out of the field, very limited food as far as like no big meals. So if you're wondering what I had, my first meal was broth and a cracker. And that continues. This is a day two refeeding program for me. And there's not a lot of options. You gotta start slow so your guts can start working again, but it's warm and cozy and there's food and it's pretty nice. We have our own pet. Here, here he is. Oh, he just took off again. So yep, this is, what, this is where all the food comes in, and you um, can sit around in here and have a cup of tea and some chow. Oh, <laughs> there's Chippy, getting some snacks, that right there. That's a meal. A little more veggie than broth right there. That's good stuff. And a cracker. We're with Jesse Bosdell and he's going to show us how he harvested um, the inner cambium of spruce to eat. I've never seen this done and I'm pretty curious about how it goes on. So he's going to show us. This hard bark is called a cork cambrian. It's just hard bark. This is what everything changes into after it gets old and old and old. This is uh, everything that we're going to eat. But right now, this is since this is old, we can't eat it. It's not moving what we want. So I'm just going to peel this off. And you know what you're getting down because it's all hard and crusty, very much like cork. Well, just peel it back, 
peel it back. You can do this on most every conifer, except for a few types of pine, but they're not in this area. Uh, except for a few types of pine, you can eat the phloem the, uh, in the xylem, which makes the vascular cambrium. But getting off this outer layer of bark, you can tell by it's starting to get red, then turns brown. You know you're right when you can turn it. It's gonna be pretty much all white is when you get down to the actual, uh, uh, what you want to eat, the vascular cambrian. So up underneath here, you can see, I started getting the bark off. Now what, I, so far I haven't hurt the tree. I'm just pretty much taking the skin off the tree. So I haven't, I haven't hurt it yet whatsoever. And I'm starting to get down to this white meaty kind of stuff. Well, that right there is the vascular cambrian. So right up underneath this cork stuff, there's a bark, is the inner bark which is the vascular cambium. And as you can see, it's very, very gummy. You know, it's very soft, very easy to peel. And you can just strip this off, this whole thing off here, kind of like you're peeling uh, orange peels or something like that, but it's a little bit more meaty feeling. Up underneath this, I want to show you, you where you know you're done harvesting. It's very soft, very soft. You won't be able to peel it up like this. Very soft, easy. This is all the vascular cambium, all the vascular cambium. Easy, and then you start getting down to hard wood. Right there, it's hard, hard wood. That, that's just like when it's dried out, the sap wood on the inside. That's right there when it's not peeling easy, and it's just wood, and it's coming off as chips. That's the inside of the wood, don't eat that. You wanna eat the stuff that's on top of that, the vascular cambium. So right here, just cut this off. And you wanna make sure, because each type of tree has a different type of uh, flavor to it, so you want to make sure you try to get all the bark off and uh, all the outside bark off and you want to get all the uh, so all the sometimes green off there scrape that off there because if you don't it'll give it a turpentine taste it's not gonna hurt you it's just gonna taste not so great uh, so this right here is the vascular cambion and this has all the nutrients from the soil and the Sun so it's a lot of sugars so carbohydrates and amino acids no protein so it's something you can't really sustain yourself off of. Man can't live off just bark alone, so you need some protein to go with it. But this stuff tastes really good. Tastes very much like chewing gum with a little bit of uh, what you would think is pine. So if you ever had pine needle tea and chewed gum, mix those flavors together, and that's what this tastes like. And it does chew exactly like gum. So here you go, Brooke. All right. It's gonna take a little turpentine. I didn't get all the bark off. So that's a really interesting, I've never seen this and I wanna try it. Now there's only a few types of pine trees you can't Ooh. eat. Yeah, a little turpentiny, right? Yeah, it's a bit turpentiny. I need to get you can get a little bit more deeper and deeper you go, the sweeter and sweeter it is. Yeah, and after you dry it out, that turpentine taste is absolutely out of it. You won't be able to taste it. How else can you process this to use this? So, when I would uh, when I would uh, ever use this, I just use it on small trees that would be and use the entire tree. So the pine brats, and I take the wood and I use it for something else. Because when you actually start harvesting this in mass, you'll kill the tree. So there's no reason just to leave a standing dead tree. Um, so I would cut it down. I make sure I do it smaller, a smaller trees, unless you're going for a snack, which you can do sustaining it as such. But what I would do is I could strip this off in big long strips using my knife. Just after you get this all deep bark, peel it up, big long strips. It comes off really easy uh, because it's a soft, meaty material. You uh, take those big long strips, you can dry them out. It takes about two days or if you just dehydrate them or put them over a fire, it'll be quicker. Dry it out and you can start grinding it up. Now I did it with a rock, so like a mortar and pestle system, but it takes forever. Use like a coffee grinder or something like that and uh, you can turn it into dust, you turn it into flour, and treat it exactly like any other kind of flour. You know, you can make your bread, your biscuits, whatever you want with it. Uh, it'll have, it'll taste a lot like most wheat breads, but with a, with a hint of like pine needle in it. Uh, so you can do that, you can eat it raw, like we're doing now, and you're, you're not really gonna break down so much of the cellulose, you get more of the sugars from it than anything else. You break, instead of uh, breaking down the cellulose, which your bodies can't do. Um, so you can eat it raw, you can dry it out, make flour, or you can take it, raw and cook it up kind of like a little piece of meat as in the saps and everything will help cook it and it'll turn into a, kind of a little barky but it'll kind of have the texture of jerky so it's dry a little bit of like a jerky all taste everything tastes the same it's all i mean all the stages of this the flour the raw the jerky style will all taste the same uh just different matter how dry it is but it's um you know it's, it's a delicious food it has a lot of sugars in it for you it's 
all organic, you know, you know, it's an amazing starvation food. Whole cultures have been built off this in the Eastern United States. Uh, Andirondack uh, in, in New York, that Native American tribe, its word in the Iroquois, Andirondack, means bark eater. In the winter, when their food wasn't doing so well, you'd find Andirondacks would strip whole trees of their inner bark and be able to crush it down to flour and eat it. Uh, of course, they had the luxury of eating it with proteins so they could pass it really well, it doesn't, doesn't bind you up. But it's just like eating bread after a while. It's just eating the, nothing but carbohydrates and amino acids. It's really good for you. It's considered a starvation food. So, so uh, it's one of those things where it's good uh, because it won't run away very easily and it'll be there. It'll be the same state in the summer and the winter. Um, so it's easy to uh, harvest and it's a, it's never really goes bad or goes old. And after you're done with a tree, if you sustainably harvest it like this and you're not trying to take loads and loads of it, this will sooner or over scab over and this part right here will uh, this part right here will heal itself. But if you girdled it, you'd kill this tree. As uh, so, if you ever go into the woods and need a snack, you can always get it off the pine trees or conifers. And like I said, there are a few handfuls of trees that are not good for human consumption that are part of the pine breed uh, genus, and um, they're like the eastern white northern pine. But you can look them up in the area, see if they're there. But right now, what we're eating is perfectly fine. But always mix it with other foods. And always mix it with other foods like uh, with has protein and or fat to help push it through your system. Don't just eat it uh, by itself, or you will have a problem. Thank you so much, Jesse. And Absolutely. I hope you've learned something. I definitely have. I've never seen anybody process this and eat it, and uh, definitely a learning moment. So thanks so much, Jesse. Absolutely. Well, good morning. It's a chilly one. It is snowing. I'm out here at the river behind my gur, and we just had a beautiful sunrise that's going away really fast because it's snowing. And it's just beautiful out here, but it is absolutely frigid. Heading back to my gear, get warmed up, but it's just beautiful out here. <laughs> He's out of there. <laughs> Take out picture. We made it. Hold on. Oh, we just climbed the ridge from camp. We made it to the top. Woo! Oh, we do video. And wow, the views up here are amazing. This is why you climb mountains, right? Yes, it is. Yes. It was really amazing, it all. <laughs> Thanks for doing this thing with me. Oh, Brooke. thank you for coming, guys. And thanks for coming in Mo Mongolia. What do you think, Emily? Beautiful. Good climb. This is the best part. Now we have really now good mother of tea. A cup of tea. Yeah, yeah. and a biscuit. <laughs> and a biscuit. A cup of tea and a biscuit. <laughs> Look at that view. I have an orange. Ah! Yeah. He has an orange. Look at that view. 365. Because <laughs> you need the extra five. <laughs> Another amazing Mongolia ridge. They just, they're all beautiful. Well guys, this is it for me. I'm leaving camp 
heading back to Ulaanbaatar today. Last day at orientation camp and tap out camp. It's been a good run. I've been here a week. Looking forward to a change of scenery and getting back to the city and on our way home at last. It's been good. But all good things must end. I will miss it. Signing off. Never stopped. Traffic is intense. Like camping. <laughs> Solid brass. <laughs> Gotta be brave. Alright guys, I have to be honest, I am freaking out just a little. We just made that giant eight hour trip out of our Gur camp all the way to Ulaanbaatar, the city. We're back in the city and oh, tired, exhausted. Got into my room and I feel like the, the specialist person. You gotta see this room. This is one of the nicest rooms I've ever stayed in. Check it out. Okay walk in the door and you've got this giant king size bed and a beautiful TV on the wall. You've got like furniture in the room like yeah I'm gonna be hanging up some <laughs> nothing <laughs> right got chairs and I'm like oh what a nice room right and here I am I turn the corner and there's another room. Look at this. There's another room. There's like, look at this. There's whiskey and glasses and in, in this cabinet. Here's all the beverages. You get, you get some cold beverages. You got like another whole room. Here's another TV and like desk and a couch. And, oh, ooh, 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 I'm going to put some books in here. <laughs> well, that's, here's my lounge, okay? And I'm like, I, I, I just can't believe the room. Like, it's amazing. I'm like, what does the bathroom look like? Check out the bathroom. So I'm coming in, the door is closed, okay? What's the bathroom look like? This is going to be, I'm like, holy crap. There's like a spa in here. Look at this bathroom. And it's huge. This is amazing. Oh my goodness. Oh, the reward for all of this hard work we did. All of the suffering. And we get this we get this gorgeous room. <sighs> I can't believe it. I feel so lucky right now. Anyway guys, I had to share this cool room with you. I mean, I don't usually get treated this well. This is pretty amazing. We're in downtown Ulaanbaatar, the capital of the city of Mongolia. And I just get to chill tonight. I'm gonna get some room service. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a bath. It's a pretty good ending. Pretty good ending. I'll keep you. I'll keep you in the loop because I'm gonna order room service too. It's gonna be. It's gonna be epic. Epic. 
Let's see the view. There's a little bit of my view. Let's go to the other window. Man, I can't believe this. I cannot believe this. It's like the most fancy room I've ever been in. And there's more of the view of downtown. Wow. All I can say is wow. See you guys later. And then this is like the the, the big government building, yeah. right? Yes, definitely. That's his generals, that was his, his bodyguards, and that's Chimis Khan in the middle. Oh yeah? Yeah. His generals are on his left and right. So behind me is the government building. And it's huge. We're in like the city center square, I guess. The and world. pretty cool. This Genghis Khan statue and his bodyguards on each side. Pretty cool. Here at the top of the 17th floor of I don't know what hotel. Fancy, fancy restaurant with Yuka and Jesse. I can't believe we're here. We're at we got such a view here. I just want to show it to you. It's amazing. And this restaurant too. Yeah. I'm finally too cool. I His name was Tolga. No. Yeah, I don't remember. I don't remember his last name. How did he know? He's a college He went to. He went to. He did two years in America. And then he's.
Oh, as far as any traps that I made, I did make an Arapuka bird trap and it was pretty frustrating because I had I didn't have any cordage. I brought trapping wire and so I made the Arapuka bird trap using the trapping wire and I was just I would I would make it and discover that the, the wire that I was using would not bind those pieces together. Uh, so that thing would fall apart all the time and it was really frustrating. But I knew there would there was some grouse around. I just I didn't see them much. The big black ones would just take off so quickly. But I, so I made an Arapuka bird trap and I set it up uh, around my camp. I only had the patience to do one of them, and it took a lot of patience. Just like because that just it, they would not bind. You know, it, it pretty much you put it together with pressure as you're laying the sticks, and it kind of pressurizes with the cordage. But with wire, it just would, didn't want to do that. You could, you could, you know, put them in there. If you tweaked it at all, it would just, it would just completely fall apart. Um, but I had it set up uh, for several weeks, and I would try to find seeds. And, and uh, it, it seemed like when I did see the grouse way up in the top of trees, they were eating the larch. They were eating either needles or pine cones of the larch. I couldn't really tell. And so I would go and gather larch and I would go to the grasses and the sedges and stuff around there and grab the seeds, the seed pods, and I would put a little pile of that stuff in in there to bait them in and, and it just, it never worked. It was triggered a couple times, but I never did get um, success in catching anything. So that, that was my trap I made. Otherwise, I just, I wasn't seeing any wildlife at all. No squirrels, no chipmunks nothing that would indicate that even if I put traps out, I would get anything. So I, I didn't do that. I did have one single mouse at my camp. When I would sit around the campfires at night, you know, I, I would sit there and wait for night to fall, just sitting around the campfire. It was really nice. Hey, buddy. And <clears throat> there would be this one mouse that would come out and it would go around looking for any little pieces of fish I might have dropped. And we'd play this game every night. I'd get a stick and uh, wait for it to get close, get a little closer. Bam! Oh, those things are so fast. I, I could never get that one. I was able to get a couple back at base camp like that, just smacking them with a stick. But this one out at my, at my shelter, I just could not, I couldn't get it. And, it was sort of, and then I just kind of felt like uh, we were buddies. I'd wait, you know, and it would come around the campfire as soon as it got dark, and it would, it would go around looking for any crumbs. And uh, yeah, never did was able to kill that mice. But that's the only mouse I saw. And was, I never had any trouble with mice in my shelter or anything. So yeah, that that's the only uh, stuff I ever tried to kill or trap, and not very successful. Take me to the mountains where the rivers flow On through the valley, way down below And you look up to the sky, you see the falcons fly When you're in the mountains, you can touch the sky ooh, 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 Take me to the mountains where the colors glow From the golds of autumn to the alpine glow You sit around a fire on a cold clear night When you're in the mountains it's a magic sight and ooh, 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 ooh. It's a feeling that you get Go on and find it It's a feeling wild and free Go on and chase it Take me to the mountains Where the wild roam Gonna climb a thousand Gonna climb the dome When I get up to the top Look around and say 
when you're in the mountains. It's a glorious day. I gotta go, I gotta, gotta go. Take me there, take me there.